is wonderful. At this time, I will be introducing our special music, and it is none other than our very own choir, Exalted Praise. And this morning, we will have the, so the soloist for the song they will be singing this morning will be sung by Oriyama Linebarger. Please give them a hearty amen and welcome them this morning.
Wow, that was so pretty. I forgot it was my turn to preach. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. Let us stand together. And let us repeat our statement of mission. Community Praise Center is a family of churches transforming lives in Christ, teaching life through Christ, experiencing the life of Christ. You may be seated. I was sorry to hear, as some of you know, I've been out of town all week at a detox center. So pastor's feeling quite detoxed. <laughs> but um, I was sorry to get word as I got back that Brother Steele has been in the hospital this week. So we're glad to see you in church today, Brother Steele. Praise God for every day the Lord gives you, my friend. Every day the Lord gives you. For those of us who have been following along with us in the prayer meeting, we are now into the section where we're dealing with various aspects of mental health. And this coming Wednesday, I'll be leading in the study on individuality. If you don't have the schedule or the time to come to prayer meeting, you may want to join us by reading in the book the second volume of Mind, Character, and Personality, and the chapter for this week is chapter 45. And join us in studying that chapter. And then one other little reminder, don't forget this evening to send the clocks forward. It's earlier than usual, isn't it? Seems odd, but that's where it'll be. And so you're going to lose an hour of sleep. You'll be okay. Just don't think about it. Being the best lover you can be. Being the best lover you can be. By now, you have figured out that these sermons are not just about marriage. These three sermons, and this is the third one, though I'm thinking about doing two more, but these sermons are about human relationships, of which marriage is only one. Now, we recognize the fact that marriage is the grandmother, the grandfather of all relationships. There was a husband and wife before there was a son and daughter. Is that not true? Yes. It's the oldest human relationship. It is out of marriage, in the context of marriage, that all other human relationships were to blossom and grow and find direction and meaning. It was God's plan. If God's plan had not been interrupted by man's disbelief and lack of trust, it was God's plan that children grow up in a context of a marriage and therefore learn the meaning of love. Can I get a witness? This is not to make anybody feel bad who's never been married, who is now single. We're talking about the ideal. That was the ideal. And the Bible always presents the ideal without apology. So it's the grandmother, the grandfather of all relationships. But out of that relationship, marriage, then sisters were to learn how to get along with sisters and brothers with sisters and aunts with uncles and so forth and so on. Out of that first relationship, all other relationships were to be, have being, have definition, have purpose, have direction. So these sermons are not just about marriage. It's about learning to love human beings. It's about phileo love, brotherly love. It's about, it's, about, it's about eros love, sexual love. It's about agape love, which is the ideal love. For agape love loves because loving should be done, not because somebody is lovable. I'll say amen for you. Amen. It's godly love. And that is the word used in 1 John 4, 8, when the Bible says, for God is love. It actually is saying, it, it is, it's actually saying, theos ace, theos ace agape, 
theos ace agape, for God is love, therefore love is godly. So how can one be the best lover one can be? We've talked about love the problem. We've talked about this idea of love at first sight and can it be, and we'll go back to that for a few minutes today. But the fact is, is that how can I be the best lover? Whether I'm talking about my friend, whether I'm talking about my parents, whether I'm talking about my spouse, whether I'm talking about my neighbor, whether I'm talking about my coworker, how can I be the best lover I can be? And why am I failing at love? Because the more I study these subjects, Dr. Bridges, the more I'm coming to understand that the problem with the planet is love. Ah, uh, you're not listening to me. So we, we, we take love and set it up there somewhere as something we also enjoy. But if God is love, then love is the essence of being alive. For there's no existence without God. There's no being without God. There's no trees without God. So our problem is love. This singular emotion, feeling, essence, being, whatever you want to call it, that's our problem. And we're going to define today clearly why we're sometimes stumbling stumbling at loving. Well, we didn't have prayer, did we? So let's do it. Bless us, Lord. Teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 1, verse 26. Got an email from someone who watches this regularly, and they, was, they were fussing at me. They were saying, all you do is teach. And then they complimented me. They said, you're a good preacher, but you don't preach enough. You just teach. So I emailed them back and told them, hang in with the teaching, because that's all I know how to do. Mm -hmm. Preaching with me happens accidentally, but teaching, I know how to do. Mm -hmm. I'll say amen for myself. <laughs> Genesis 1, verse 26. Ready? Let's read. And God said, everybody's reading, and God said, I want the choir down here. Sorry, I want the choir down here. I want the choir down here, right over here. So we're not streaming, so nobody needs to get upset. Come on together. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And God said, let us make man in our own image. Just repeat that with me. And God said, let us make man in our image. Okay, okay. God is described as our and us. That should be expected. Listen to the pastor. God can't be an only. He has to be an us and an our. Because God is love. And love requires an object. <sighs> Punch the person next to you and tell them to wake up. Let me try you again. God has to be a plural being because God is love. Right? And love requires an? Oh, Richard, thank you. Somebody said, oh, sunk in, sunk in. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Mother, Father, Children. Godly Trinity, Human Trinity. Love requires objects or it dies. Love's got to have something to bestow itself on. So I just taught you, Sandy, that you need to love. You're created to love because love requires an object. 
But the text is saying more than that. It's saying more than that. It said, Larry, let us make man in our image. Who is God? God is. God is. Talk to me. God is. So if we're made in God's image, then we are. Ha! Huh? The thing that sin does most to us, Mary, is to distort the image of God in us. And when it distorts the image of God in us, it distorts our ability to love. Our problem is, is, our problem is God's image is being consumed in us by sin. And the opposite of love is selfishness. Now, I'm hitting you with a lot of stuff, but you've got to think this morning. I'm teaching you. You've got to think. We're made in God's image. God is love. Therefore, I am made to be love. And when I don't love, then I'm destroying God's image in me. This is why the devil hits you every day with all kinds of stuff, with people, my dear lady, with situations that make you not want to love. He knows that when he does that, he's destroying, crippling God's image in your soul. He's around you with mean people, misunderstanding people, selfish people, unkind people, lying people, dishonest people, cruel people, all kinds of people that, 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 that corrode and corrupt. But God says, uh-uh, uh-uh, watch me. I love the sinner. See, love never stops loving. I need some help this morning. Love never stops loving. Love is always busy loving. Why? Because God is love, and if lo God is in me, then I can't just turn off my love because somebody doesn't speak to me. I can't just turn off my love because someone's unkind to me. I can't just turn off my love because somebody says something I don't like. Love keeps on loving. Love's right on through that idiot's mess. Go back and repeat, that's why the Lord created church. Church is a good place to learn to love because the church is full of odd people. It is God's incubator, God's laboratory, God's, 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 God's way station where, 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 Gerald, you can exercise your love muscles because there's always going to be somebody on Sabbath who had a bad day Acting up, got a bad tone, got a bad look, got a bad attitude, and you're sitting right next to them in church or walk right by them in the, li in the lobby, or maybe you live with them. And on Sabbath morning, the devil made sure that they touched your buttons. So you come to church with your mouth stuck out, your feeding's all, and nobody can say anything to you because you're already upset and you got the attitude they bed not get on my wrong side today. Somebody went to work like that this week. Go on and say amen. Are you listening to your pastor? So Genesis 1.26 is a meaty piece of Bible. And God said, I'm love. Let's make them love. God said, I'm an us. Let's make them an us. Let's give them a Trinitarian ambiance where they can practice love. And you see what God does, what, what the devil does, see, through sin and generations of sin, then you have kids who also have problems, but you're supposed to love them. But they're like you. And then we've learned, put my circles up there, we've learned that, that, that we, have, we have other problems with loving. Other problems with loving. Our, our brain, the brain, this, this three and a half pound mass of protoplasm that has the capacities of a, of, of a computer the size of the Empire State Building, of which we only use eight to 10% which means we're only using 8 to 10% of our love capacity.
and we learn. But, 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 but keep, they keep the circles there. They, 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 so, 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 so the brain, the brain, the brain. And, and, and the brain has a left side and a right side, and, and, and the left side of the brain, the two circles on the, uh, on the left, th th those, are the, those, are the, those are the parts of the brain, the two quadrants of the brain that, that are cognitive, that, that do most of the thinking. And the right side of the brain, uh, that's the brain that does most of the feeling, the emoting. And, and, that, and, that, and that top circle, that top left circle, that's the circle where you do your prioritizing. You decide who, will, you, you decide who you will love and in which order you will love them. It's the, it's the upper left that lets you know you should love your spouse the most. <laughs> then your parents and your siblings is the left side. Keeps your love in order. There's some loving you can do with your spouse you can't do with other folks. Isn't that true? So it, it prioritizes. Make sure you act. You have good sense when you love. Yes. Not a complete idiot when you yes. love. Just, 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 yes. you know. You know. Yes. That's, that, that's upper left. Yes. That, that, don't, don't, lo don't love that person like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, upper left. And then, and then the lower left, that is your, that is your organizing. It, it not only does that left side teach you how to prioritize, but it gives you an orderly way of loving. And, and you know, it helps, helps you remember birthdays and, and anniversaries and Valentine's Day. That's the lower left. You, you, you married to someone who doesn't do that well, they got problems with the lower left. <laughs> can't remember nothing. They can remember to eat. They can't remember that you got married, you know. <laughs> and then just having fun with you. Then the, the, the upper right, that, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that, that's the part that, that, that uh, visualizes. That's, that's, the, that's, that's the part of the brain that just enjoys loving. Ah, just, just enjoys loving. Just, just wants to love everybody. Just loves the whole world. Loves the flies. Loves the grass. Just <laughs> loves breathing. Just loves. Visualizing. And, and, then, and, then, and then the lower, the lower right, the, 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 that, that's the part that, that, that harmonizes, that brings everything together, fellowships, that reaches out and touches everybody. The devil got all up in our brains, didn't he? Yes, he did. And began to develop, get the circles up there, out of those quadrants, various, so, so, so it, because he got up in the brain because he knew that each of those quadrants develops a temperament. So the upper left is a choleric person, likes to control. The, 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 the lower left is the melancholic uh, person, uh, kind of, kind of, you know, kind of staid and demanding and whatever. And then, and then the, and then the upper right, the, 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 the sanguine person, that's, that's the fun-loving, enjoyable person to be around. And then the lower right, the phlegmatic, quiet, dedicated. The devil got all up in that stuff. I said the devil got all up in that stuff. Because now we know that where God intended that all those quadrants have nothing but positive qualities, now we know all those quadrants also have negative qualities. Do we not know that? So no matter who you married, what their main temperament is, even if they're a quad or a tri, it makes no difference. Whatever quadrant they're operating out of at any moment, there is a negative side that can show up at any moment based on how much the God who loves controls their life. Therefore, and I've said this before, but some things you never apologize for saying more than once because they're true every time. Therefore, when you marry someone who's not in the Lord, or you have a child that's not in the Lord, or a co-worker, Rick, who's not in the Lord, or a neighbor who's not in the Lord, they, their, their capacity to return the love you want to give is diminished and crippled. And some of us were reared by parents who were crippled that way. So we never really knew good love from them. And so it was difficult for us to know love when we found it. This is why the love problem passes on like poison from one generation to another. Are you listening to me? And, and I keep surely coming back to the one answer. See, the, see the, the, the more I study this, the more I'm convinced, uh, Conrad, there's one answer, Jesus. Oh, shoot, y'all. Jesus. 
Christ, but, but, but see, but, but, but see what we, 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 we think Jesus wants to come and just help us keep the Sabbath. Jesus wants to come and help us eat right. No, that, that shallow stuff. Jesus wants to consume your brain with himself. So that whatever you do, whatever you do, you are doing it in love, out of love, in a loving way. We keep pushing Jesus in some corner to pop up at our convenience. He wants to control you every second you're alive because he knows you have a love problem. No wonder the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new lover. Old love has passed away. Behold, his love now becomes new. Somebody say amen out there. Christ wants to do the loving. You cannot, you, we are incapable of love. But he is all loving. We made the point in the sermon, and I'm skipping all over my notes because this stuff is all up in my head. But we made the point in the sermon last week, love at first sight. Is it real? Then we said, it should be possible for the sight guided by the principle of godly agape to value every human being as worthy to be loved. It should be possible. But I went on to say, but for us in our human form with brain quadrants poisoned by sinful heredity and sin-distorting experiences, and folks, as I present these sermons, Deb, I present them with a the consciousness that many of us are good, decent, willing people wanting to love but we have grown up in circumstances that have made us almost scared to death of the word love. Mm. We've been hurt. We've been disappointed. But I'm going to take you somewhere today. But for us in our human form with brain quadrants poisoned by sinful heredity and sin-distorting experiences, love at first sight is Russian roulette. Misguided, emotional, passion-filled, and seldom rooted in, in the heavenly principle. To love it all, let alone at first sight. To love it all, let alone at first sight, we must be filled with Christ. And really, Glenn, you know, that, that, that's the sermon. I'm not done, but that's the sermon. And we could preach on love for all year, but that's the sermon. The defacing of the image is the success of Satan. Therefore, Brother Cunningham, though our hearts are willing, our minds are distorted. Can I get a witness? And we hear the pastor, but we have to go back out there in the context of our DNA, of our experience, and then the constant battering of our love by those who do not love. And so we become, we become listen, we become less and less believing that it can happen for me. And the minute, Claudette, that the devil gets you there, he's got you. He's got you. And that's why, listen, listen, that's why there was a cross. Jesus wanted to demonstrate that I don't care how bad it gets, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. They will not nail out of me my love for them. They will not spit on me and stop me from loving them. They will not slap the love out of me. Come on, somebody. They will not lie on me and make me stop loving. I'll spread my hands anyhow and lay there on the cross and love them to my last breath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wanted to show you how to love. Let me clarify. That kind of love is not a fool. The same Bible that says, for God so loved, says the day will come when some will not be with me. I never knew you. Now, all of a sudden, Ron, the text, I never knew you, takes on no more meaning. The part, I never knew you, you never became love. I don't know unlove. You never became my brother, you never became my sister. 
I can't be around you for eternity. You're a poison to the universe. Satan, the rest of my preaching now will be in Genesis. Satan understood the love principle. Satan, Cliff, knows who God is. Let me tell you what Satan knows. Because when he went up against God, God could have destroyed that rascal. Come on, y'all. Satan has experienced God's love. God held back his greatness and his majesty. Must have taken every strength that God could use not to take him out. But God, understanding the principle of love, my dear brother, boy, you did a good job with that choir, did not want, he did not want the angels to think that love acts like that. So though the devil took him on, God said, uh-uh, you're not, you're not, you're not going to tempt me to stop loving. I'm going to let you destroy yourself. And so the desire of ages says that at the cross, when the, when, the, when, the, when the angels unfallen saw the devil and his angels hammering the nails in the hands of Jesus Christ, they said, we got it now. We don't want that. Let me put it simply. Satan is totally devoid of love. Therefore... He is totally devoid of the image of God. Therefore, he cannot exist. His death eternally is not God's anger, but God's mercy. you've ever been around a person who has lost their ability to love, you are around a despicable human being indeed. Devil possessed. I say that with no apology. And so in Genesis 3 and verse 5, the devil gets busy. Now I can see I will not be able to finish this sermon. So I will finish it some of the Sabbath that I can find. <laughs> and there's no apology. See, some truths, folk, you can't rush through. We're talking here about our salvation. Can I get a witness? We're talking here about our ability to be everything God wants us to be. So pastor's serious about this. I never apologize. If you're visiting church for the first time, I never apologize about finishing a sermon. Except means you've got to come back. <laughs> now, this verse is too fat to rush through. Watch it. Genesis 3, 5, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Let me just reword that. For God doth know that in the day you distrust the lover, then your eyes will be opened, and you will know, as I know, what it's like to love and not love. Now watch what happens. Verse 6. Brother Bogan, verse 6 is a, whew, it's an H-bomb. And when the woman saw the tree that it was good for food, that was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit and did what? She did what? What stage is the immediate Result. She did, what's, what's the immediate result? She gave also to her husband. She immediately committed an act of unlove. Come on, y'all, don't miss that. It's in the Bible. She separated herself from love and immediately lost her ability to love her husband and led him into sin. Do you see it? You can't miss that. It's right there looking at you. Separated from the source of love, and her first act right after she separates is an unloving act. You can't love without God. 
I can't let you miss that. Isn't that something? It's right down the Bible. We read right through it. If we miss it, we miss it. Eats. Love now is distorted. Her capacity to value Adam is messed up. So now she doesn't care that he's going to be a sinner like her. See, sin is always self-centered. Now watch. Now watch. Gave all his resume with her, and he did what? What did he do? What did he do? Now watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So he eats. Now their eyes are open. They know they're naked. Now they do an unloving act together. What do they do? Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. They sow fig leaves together. In order to do that, they had to destroy a tree. So now they don't love nature. <laughs> don't miss it! Our unloving hearts corrupt the earth, pollute the ground, kill the animals, eat the fish. Now, both diminished in love, they can destroy one of God's creations. They strip a tree completely of its leaves. They're two great big people, so there's got to be a lot of leaves. He's 14 feet tall. She's 12 feet tall. He weighs about a ton. She weighs a petite 1,200 pounds. You don't get any leaves from a tree. <laughs> Might have been several trees, Stash. <laughs> They're now ripping off leaves. They don't care about the trees. These trees were their friends. Uh, education says they talk to the trees, and the trees say, what are you doing taking your leaves? Got to cover yourself. They don't care about nature. But we're not done. It's all in the Bible. I'm not making this up. Just reading the Bible. You got to read it deep. You got to read it deep. Yeah, yeah. So now, here they're destroying a tree. Look at the next unloving act. Verse 8. Read it. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife did what? Hid. They hid from love. See, now distorted in love, they can't stand, stand the presence of real love. That's why there are people who with distorted love problems have trouble being loved. They, not, they, they can't receive God's love anymore. Do you see it? <laughs> Forgive me for being so passionate about it. I don't want you to miss this. They have lost suddenly their ability to be in the presence of the great lover. His love is too strong because they're, they're no longer loving. His love is too powerful. They can't stand being in the presence of it. So they hide from love. I believe I read somewhere, I think I'm in Revelation now, that when Jesus comes the second time, the sinners will cry, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. People now totally corrupted from love, totally eaten up from love, cannot stand when love breaks through the clouds and glory. Hide us from this love. Is this thing serious? I said, is this thing serious? So some of us today are afraid to love, afraid to be loved. We want to we wanna step out, Keith. We want to we wanna be loved, and the person seems to be right, but hide me. I can't handle it because love in me is so distorted. This, this may be the real thing, and I, I want the real thing, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Somebody in this room knows what I'm talking about. That's just Genesis 3, 5, 3, 6, 3, 7. And now the bomb, 3, 12. Now the disease of love destruction is working itself through them. See the progression? First, she just gets him to eat. Then they both strip a tree. You see it? Now, 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 together they're doing unloving things. But now, 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 now the final blow is if, as if Adam and Eve, Sylvia, thought they might escape from separating themselves from the true lover. Now, verse 12 is the bomb. And the man said, and the man said, who, t see verse 11, who told you? Who told you? Now love, corrupted in Adam, speaks out the woman. 
whom thou gavest to be with me. And I can feel the cold chill run through Eve's body and mind. He doesn't love me anymore. He's selling me out. He's blaming me. Throw me under the bus. And you think this thing is not serious? That's why the first baby born was born angry and a murderer. Because now Eve must live with the fact every day of her life that her husband sold her out. And though they go on and they have sex and they have a child, the first child is born in an unloving atmosphere. And so the Bible wants us to know how quickly unloving diminishes human beings. And so the first child born has no capacity to love. And then by the time you get to Genesis 6, 5, and 11, if you're turning with me, Genesis 6, 5, and 11. See, pastor's mind is working this morning. I'm detoxed. <laughs> Poison's out of my body. Brain is clear. We work in this book today. Aren't we working this book? Is this book talking to us? Now look at, look at Genesis 6, verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness, I'm going to substitute the unlovingness of man, was great in the earth. You see verse 5? Come on, read, read the rest of it with me. Come on. And every imagination of the thoughts of his heart. The mind, the mind now, D, is totally messed up. They, the, 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 the disease has run through now all the generations of man. This is Noah's day, ten generations later. Look what unloving has done to the human race. So much that God said, I can't save but eight of them. The damage is just too great. I got to start fresh with eight. Why? Why? Look at verse 11. Look at verse 11. The earth was also corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with, filled with, filled with. Acts of not loving have now become the trend. Acts of unloving have now become the trend. Acts of unloving have now become the trend. When acts of unloving become the trend of the human race, then God must come. God must come and save us from ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, if we didn't have the promise of the second coming, the day would come when living on planet Earth would be worse than being in hell. I'll never forget the Time Magazine article that was written back when the war in Rwanda was taking place and the, what was it, the Hootsies and the Tutsis, something like that, fighting one another. And this, this non-religious, this non-religious writer of great skill said that there were reports that the men running around killing people of the opposite tribe said their eyes were vacant of humanity. That was in Time Magazine. I have the article clipped out of my, 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 my file at home. The eyes of those doing these acts were devoid of humanity. I tell you today that was not an exaggeration. They told the truth and didn't know what truth they were telling. I have counseled women, and don't make, not to make you feel bad, men, but I've done more counseling of battered women than battered men. I was counseling some battered women. I remember one young lady sitting in a prison in Ohio, and she said to me, she said, the day my husband went at me with the knife, she said, there was no humanity in his face. When we watch it, watch it. When we do not let love rule, then Satan does. Now 
Now, what was love meant to do? I have to finish that some other time. And I feel bad right now because I never like to end sermons on a negative note. But Cheryl, I can't, I can't get into this. I got two more sections of sermon. Can't get into it. So are you going to come back? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're going to come back. Because I got to talk about what was love meant to do. Mm. And that's in Genesis 1, 27 and 28. That's in Genesis 2 and verse 18. And that's in Genesis 2, 24 and 25. We got to eat them texts up like we eat in a sandwich, y'all. We got to chew them and masticate them and, and get, because there's, there's hope in those scriptures. God, see, God is never caught off guard by man's foolishness. So knowing, knowing what would happen, he set a plan to, to rescue us so that human beings actually can love. Hallelujah. All right, uh, play just as I am. Let's pray, y'all. Listen to the song now. Calm down. Pastor's got to calm down with you. Calm down. Take a deep breath. I learned to do that this week, detoxing. Come on, take a good deep breath. Ask the Lord to remove some of the tensions in your mind. Some of you had a rough week. Unlove was all around you. I learned this week in a lecture that I, that I took on mental detoxation. That the, at, listen, the average human being 72% of their thoughts are negative. We seldom think positive thoughts. That's the result of being in a world that is unloving. Of course, I also learned this week that when we can get the wrong things out of our bodies, our ability to respond to God increases 100%. See, that's why the devil's first act was food, food, food. Bad food diminishes our ability to love, to be open to God, have mercy. I got to resist preaching the rest of my sermon. Help me, Lord. So, Jesus, we just open our hearts today. There's hope. There's hope. We can love. We can be loving. We can do it, but only in Jesus. So my simple appeal today, the same appeal I made last Sabbath at the end of the second sermon and the second service, would you open your heart now to Jesus? Confess the unloving acts this week. Confess them now. Now remember, we started last week saying we would offer our mouths, <laughs> our tongues. I don't know how you did this week. I was way at a detox center, so it was, it was easy to be nice. Just trying to survive. It wouldn't feed me anything, so I was, I was nice all week. Never said a mean thing. Just, Lord, help me. <laughs> but maybe your mouth got out of whack this week. Unlove came out of it. Offer your thoughts. And now I'm going to challenge the first service as I did the second service last week that you would give just your tongue to the Lord this week. More on love comes out of our mouth than any other place. We just say stuff we don't need to be saying with tones we don't need to be using at times that are not good. We're frustrated. We're tired, and we just say it. Give your tongue. The unloving part of your tongue, give it to Jesus right now in faith, in trust, knowing you'll be tested as soon as you walk out of this church, maybe before you leave. My final appeal. You're sitting here today. God's love is reaching out to you. 
you've never said yes to Jesus, you've been thinking about joining this church, becoming a part of this church, taking Bible studies at this church, maybe even transferring to this church, responding to the love of God. And while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you'd like to rise from your seat and come forward and give me your hand right now. Is there one like that? Going to become a part of CPC? Going to take Bible studies? Going to transfer your membership? Are you here? Could you just get up and come forward? These closing moments, I want to end on time. Come on, where are you? He'll take you like you are. You don't have to come fixed up. Just come. I'm going to let that second hand go around just another minute. Come on, friend. You're sitting there, and you're trying to out-argue God. You're going to lose. Just come. Don't talk to him about the stuff you must get straight before you come because you'll never get anything straight without him. Just come. Come forward. If you're praying, I need your help. And when you pray, you help me. Just a few more seconds. Will you come? Thank you, Father. I, I, I really feel that you've spoken to us today. We have much to think about. It's kind of the kind of sermon you have to maybe kind of hear again and just think about what you heard. But help us. In Jesus' name and all the people said, amen. Okay, we'll pick up. We'll pick up right at the fourth section. What was love meant to do? Got that, Cliff? I'll let you know. Hopefully by next week when I'll preach the rest of this sermon. Is that all right? You promise you'll come back now, hear the rest of this sermon. You've got to hear it because the best part has not been preached yet, Crosby. Yeah, it hasn't been preached yet. Are you glad you came this morning? Yeah. Folks, I had a wonderful experience this week at a place called Optimum Health Institutes. Pastors had nothing in his body this week but raw food, juices, and wheat grass. Now, two ounces of wheatgrass will make you think you've eaten a whole meal. No, I'm serious. It totally detoxes the body. I had to make myself stop preaching this morning. I could have preached for two hours this morning. I'm just, I'm alive all over in my body. Just, I'm full of it. <laughs> it was a wonderful experience. And I'm convinced that one of the best things human beings can do is at least maybe two or three times a year, detox. You can't live in this world and not be full of toxicity. It is in toxicity that cancer thrives. It's in the alkaline atmosphere that the body has the strength to fight off every manner of disease. Went to the place with knees hurting, came back dead, knees ain't hurting. Other personal things I could tell you, they ain't none of your business, but it's fixed. <laughs> just, just fixed. Hallelujah. Some of y'all figured it out. Some of y'all figured it out. Yeah. Fixed. Are you with me? It's fixed. So pastor's feeling good. I love each one of you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> We'd like to have our deacons to wait upon us now and receive the tithe and also the free will offering. Please join our praise team in singing.
are victorious. Oh, 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 oh. My name is Victory. All right, now you should have it. Let's sing that again. I've got evidence. I've got confidence. I'm a conqueror. I know that I win. I know who I am. God wrote it in his plan for me. Oh, oh, oh. My name is Victory. Top. I've got evidence. I've got evidence. I've got confidence. I'm a conqueror. I know that I win. I know who I am. God wrote it in his plan for me. kind father thank you for the opportunities that you give to us to work to be able to return to you an honest tithe thank you as well for allowing us to return to you have it been today in the basket or online to return to you our tithes and our free will offerings we ask that as you've promised there in Malachi that you would open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there would not be room enough to receive it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 